Hello, this is Professor David Lurcher, School of Information, San Jose State University. And today I am very proud to have uh, Casey Boyd uh, here. And Casey, why don't you uh, uh, introduce yourself and your school? Thank you for having me today, Dr. Lurcher. Um, my name is Casey Boyd, uh, and I always introduce myself this way. I am a school librarian, and it's the best job on the planet. I love what I do for a living. This is my 24th year and third school district that I have worked in, um, specifically in school libraries. Currently, I am a middle school librarian working for the District of Columbia Public School System in Washington, D.C., and uh, we're very fortunate in this district. We have a library department um, uh, manager as well as a, as a director that supports the work of approximately 100 and 35 librarians across the district. Wow. Um, this school is um, called uh, Jefferson Academy, named after, of course, uh, Thomas Jefferson. And uh, I'm very fortunate because it was remodeled recently. It went through a um, remodernization. So I have a beautiful library uh, media center, which also includes a um, nice, beautiful lobby, as well as a uh, makerspace lab and a fiction and a nonfiction room and a conference room, which is great. Uh, uh, there are approximately a little under 400 kids that attend the school right now, and it's um, primarily uh, uh, Title I. So um, our kids come from all over the district in oh. D.C. So uh, they're an interesting group of little people. I happen to like, out of all the grade levels I've taught, elementary, middle, and high school, and working at the administrative levels um, in two previous districts, serving as a middle school librarian is is just the best because they're so much fun at this age. <laughs> I, I just cannot tell you enough. They are so much fun. And I enjoy working with this group of kids. They're just a really phenomenal group of kids. I understand you have a, a few pictures you can show us. Yeah, surely. I, I surely do. If uh, we could pull those up and kind of share them with you. Um, this is a uh, a lot of things that you see like cards like this are, were created on Canva. And I, as I learned how to use Canva, uh, which is free to K-12 educators, I have shared that love and that interest with the students. Uh, that's a little dynamic shelving. This is a project here where the kids created their own read posters holding up their own reading uh, materials. That's the nonfiction room. Uh, currently we have 14,000 books in the collection and in the Makerspace Lab, which is a very popular area, kids do themed activities every month. As you can see, Lego Day of the Dead. And sometimes kids just come in and read and they're quiet, you know? Uh, so they enjoy manga, they enjoy graphic novels, anime, you know, it goes on and on and on. Uh, we give the opportunity to the kids to choose books of their liking to read at any given time and to enjoy. Is it tough? Yes, it is. We do have some reluctant readers. We do have some struggling readers, but you know who doesn't these days because there's a lot of competition when it comes to um, reading at home, especially independent reading. So we try our best to capture the kids as much as possible with interests uh, that they um, feel affirmed to, that they feel close to, that they are interested in. And we just make this space a fun space that's hands-on. So that's pretty much my library's media center program. Uh huh. So, uh, uh, in a typical day, uh, what might be happening, you know, before school, uh, middle, lunchtime? What What would we see happening? Well, I'll I'll say this. Uh, no day is is the same. It's always different, and it's always an adventure. My day roughly starts at seven forty five, which is zero period. And as I'm getting out of my truck in the morning, I have a group of kids that are waiting to come into the library media center that early in the morning because uh, we don't start our, our first classes until eight thirty. And I'll have kids in there for about 45 minutes. And then we have advisory periods for an additional 25 minutes. I'll have kids that will flow down, not only during 
advisory periods, but all periods, all eight periods of the day, I'll have kids come down on passes to check out books. Sometimes they need a, sometime they need a little, I got to get out of the room with the rest of these kids and let me have a breather and just kind of sit and, you know, read and meditate for a minute and I'll go back to class, you know, so I get a lot of that. Um, my lunchtime periods are extremely busy. I don't have an after school program. We do more things during before school as well as during the lunch periods because after school there's some specific programs and I don't want to put that pressure on the kids where they have to choose. I want them to have the opportunity to enjoy a lot of the after school programming. So I made the adjustment and started coming in early and it's been working very well over the last year and a half. So think about, you know, what what difference does this kind of environment make in the whole as the whole picture of schooling for a, a child that's a, attending here? Yeah, um, you know, schools as a whole are safe spaces. You know, these are places in the in the community where kids can uh, go and they will be cared for by a loving adult. And with, with the library media center program, I take a nod to that and I just kick it up a couple of levels because you have a lot of varied interests um, that of the students when they come into the library program and I try and meet those needs as much as possible. Some kids just want a quiet space. Some kids actually want to work on something. Some kids just want to sit and quietly talk with other students and they want to meet, you know, for various reasons. Some students want to do quiet things online, um, whether it be Minecraft or either just looking up something that they learned previously in a previous class and they want to do a little more reading themselves about it or they, they're completing some extension of a homework program, uh, homework assignment so I, I want to create I wanted to create an environment where everyone belongs no one is excluded everyone has a voice everyone can feel empowered in this space and everyone is loved most importantly and that has been the winning ticket for me with working with kids throughout my career is making them feel um, accepted in this space so if, if you were talking to superintendents, uh, uh, board members, uh, teachers, uh, parents uh, on uh, about creating this kind of space, what kind of advice would you uh, give them? Well, I would tell them first that libra school librarianship is not a dying field. Uh, sometimes we hear excuses from district leadership in terms of, well, we can't find any certified librarians. Well, when you close library programs down, you're closing the pipeline down. A lot of people feel like they don't feel that this is not an area of education that they should go into, you know, and pursue. So what I would strongly suggest is, you know, they, uh, district leadership has got to be on board with supporting library programs because we touch every part of the curriculum um, within the K-12 system school system and why why not have a specialist that is able to teach across the curriculum and support everything in the school and on top of that social emotional learning for crying out loud a lot of my students are dealing with a lot of suppressed trauma um, yeah, trauma fun. from not only the pandemic but sometimes it's societal and community trauma and by having programs like this, it really does help kids in the long run. And, and oftentimes our school leadership looks at the bottom line, oh, this is an expensive program to run. Well, athletic programs are expensive too. You know, we have got to hone in not on just the athletes in our schools and the kids that are the top tier honor roll students, we have to look at those mid-tier mm -hmm. and low-level performing students and say, how can we support them to have their performance, to have their self-esteem about themselves and education improve? And one way of doing that is through library programs where it's not a required course, it's not a grade, this is a free open space where kids can just be. So why not have that you know this program and the specialist is certified i want to emphasize that that can support this support this that's a, a terrific kind of thing 
And so kind of in to put all this in a capsule, uh, you know, about uh, what would you uh, what would you say is the major point of all of this? Um, the major point is that we're in a, in a different we're in a time right now where uh, and I'm, I'm going to get it real deep here. U.S. Department of Education has not been cutting funds, you know, if anything, it's increased over the last couple of years. And, but our at, our, at the local level, we see all these cuts and we're not, we don't have enough money, we don't have enough money. And, and we have to look at what is a priority here? You know, our students are our priority. We have to meet them where they are and we have to have a variety of ways to meet them. And then I want to take it in another level, which is many of our administrators need to get on board in terms of, um, I say this, it's like sometimes as a school librarian, I am uh, re-educating the educated. And what I mean by that is that many of our principals and school lead leadership, uh, central office leadership, they, they don't have a clue in terms of the impact uh, that school librarians and programs, a well-stocked school library program that's functioning has on student achievement. And there's like over 30 years of research in this area. And I think it's time that our leadership gets on board and they do a little reading because if they can dive deep into the science of reading, they will find that at the root of, of the science of reading, which is an initiative right now by many districts across the country, you will find school librarianship. Thank you so very much, uh, Casey Boyd. Uh, and we haven't mentioned that you were, you have a, a great award. Uh, and tell us about that, that you achieved. In the yeah. Last um, I was blessed with uh, being named with the 2022 School Librarian of the Year by yeah. School Library Journal Magazine. It's a national recognition that is also in partnership with Scholastic Books. So it's a great yeah. honor. Well, thank you so very much. And, and uh, we will hope that lots of folks take your great advice. Thank you. And thank you for having me on today to talk about what I love and what I'm very passionate about, which is school libraries. School libraries. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.